guys welcome to TCV law series in our previous class we saw section 4 and section 3 and all the clauses in section 3 apart from clause D so in today's class we will be seeing section 3 clause D of the Indian Patent Act so this particular clause is very important because first thing this is very important for the students who study pharmacy and chemical engineering and the second thing is this is the main clause which acts as a hindrance in granting patent to pharmaceutical products and all. So come let's go see what this clause talks about. So like I already said in the previous class we saw section 3 all the clauses in it apart from clause D and section 4. So today we will be seeing section 3 clause D of the Indian Patent Act. So this clause is a very lengthy clause and it has many parts in it so we will be seeing it part by part manner so let's see the first part what the section says so this section says that the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of the substance so this cannot be granted patent so what does this say mere discovery so they mention about discovery of a new form it's a new form of known substance so something which is known so this particular clause in this first part talks about a substance which does not result in the enhancement enhancement means some improved quality of it so there is no improvement in it which does not result in enhancement of the known efficacy of the substance so efficacy in the sense the end product the desired end product of it so this section says when you are discovering something it is in a new form of the known substance so the substance is something which you already know it is already existing but that doesn't give any enhancement to it so your new form which you discovered has no enhancement with regard to the efficacy of it let me give you an example to it Suppose A is discovering a product in liquid form. So let's take the example of the medicine gelucid so that you guys can imagine it better. Okay. So we all know gelucid syrup and you all know it's used for treating stomach disorders. Now later on A is thinking that why only liquid syrup? Let's make it in a chewable tablet form. So he's making it in a solid form. So right now when he is applying patent for the solid form tablet, he won't get patent unless he shows enhanced efficacy. That's what is mentioned in this clause. Enhanced efficacy means suppose this liquid form gelucil is curing your sub stomach disorder by 3 hours. Then this solid form has to cure your disorder by half an hour. So if it doesn't cure within half an hour, then there is no enhancement in it. It is the same as this liquid form. There is nothing new in it, right? That's the main reason why patent won't be granted. So if you see this clause again, they say mere discovery. So again, he's discovering it in a new form. So new form of a known substance. So gelucil is already there. It is known substance. He just made it into a new form of it from liquid form to solid form. So new form of known substance which does not result in enhancement. So there is no enhancement means that it is also curing in 3 hours. If this is also is curing in 3 hours there will be no enhancement right. So unless and until there is enhancement that is this solid form is able to cure your disease by half an hour only then patent can be granted. If it's the same time same things then patent cannot be granted to it. The second part of this clause says the mere discovery of any new property or new use for a known substance cannot be granted patent. So this again says mere discovery of any new property. So new property or new use for a known substance. Let me give you an example to it. Let's take the example of water. So we all know water is generally in a liquid state. Now if I am keeping this water in a freezer then it will change its liquid property and come up into a solid state. So we get ice cubes. So that's what they mean by new property. So 
known substance so water is a known substance now by keeping it in a freezer i am getting a new property that is ice cubes it becomes a solid state so just because ice cube was formed i can't say i discovered a total new product it's just a new property of a known substance so as such ice cube won't be granted patent protection now let's take the example of paracetamol tablets we all know paracetamol is generally used for fever now this same paracetamol if i'm saying i'm coming up with a new use to it that it can be used as a painkiller then this painkiller aspect won't be granted patent protection why because it's again a new use of a known substance so paracetamol is already known just because you are using it as painkiller so new use to it you won't be granted patent protection to it the third and final part of this clause talks exclusively with regard to process patent so this part says the mere use of a known process like i already said it talks about known process of a machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product so unless this known process results in a new product you won't get patent or employs at least one new reactant so in case you have to get patent either this known process should have a new product or that process should have a new reactant let me give an example to it let's take a is a known process so with known process you are getting the end product as b so this is what generally happens by using a now with the same a you are finding out that c can be formed then only since it's a new product only then this a process can again be asked for patent protection otherwise they won't get patent that's what they mean the mere use of a known process known process so unless it results in new product you cannot get patent to it so now a is bringing up a new product so that's why you get patent to it otherwise you won't get the next aspect is or employs at least one new reactant so suppose the process a now this process is employing a new reactant let's take example d is a new reactant and by after adding d they are getting b much better quality of it so then since it is employing a new reactant then again they can ask for patent protection why because merely they have added a new reactant to it otherwise they won't get patent protection so by the end of this clause there is a explanation provided in the bar act so that particular explanation says that when it comes to chemical elements and all the isomers polymers ethers all those things will be considered to be the same element itself now let's take the element benzene now we have a derivative to it like ethyl benzene chloro benzene etc now what that particular explanation says is that since the element is benzene even ethyl benzene chloro benzene will ultimately be considered to be as benzene product itself so then these two won't be granted patent because ultimately they are also benzenes but if you have to get patent to it then this particular product let's take ethyl benzene the ethyl benzene should have a change in its property change in property as well as with regard to its efficacy so unless there is change in property with regard to its efficacy patent cannot be granted to it because generally they'll be considering it to be the same so if there is change in property to it and there is enhancement in its efficacy then you can get patent to it okay guys so today in our class we saw exclusively what section 3d of the indian patent act talks about thank you for watching this video if you like my class then please do like and subscribe to my channel thank you